hello. Prepare to die. Oh crap. Let's play a game, shall we? Hello everyone, welcome back to Doom. This time I thought I'd go with something a little different and go with the Super Nintendo version. Oh, this is gonna be fun, isn't it? Can't wait to see how this goes. It's gonna be crazy. Crazy indeed. Let's get started. Die. Die, you freaks. Here we go. Not too bad. There is a yep. There's a, there's another sergeant. But thankfully, they go down pretty easily. Oh, I'm about to say, better drop the shotguns for me. Otherwise, that's gonna be a bit of a prick. The, the interesting thing about the Super Nintendo version, it's it, it's the only one that actually tried to do PC version type levels, as you can see. In case you couldn't tell already. And unlike the other versions, which use the Atari Jaguar version as a base, you can tell that this one has details that the other ones don't. Obviously, this one also lacks details that the other ones have. This one has no floor and ceiling textures. But if you notice, the columns are there, and not to mention, you've got the blue carpet there. Even if it is textureless, it looks a lot closer to the PC version than the other versions. And considering this is on the 64-bit Super Nintendo, it's pretty impressive that they even managed to pull this off, to be honest. You gotta applaud their effort, even if they are working with a rather weak system. Okay, pal. Actually, maybe I should change something up a bit here. Because I'm using a Nintendo 64 controller, as I have been using. I am getting a, getting a GameCube controller, which should function better, but in the meantime, maybe I should use something else for L, because it's hard to get to the joystick and that at the same time, so... Yeah, there we go. Well, much better. Much better. Here we go. Everything should be fine now. Yeah, that's how you get to the auto map, of course. Everything's going good. All I have to do is remember that B is how you strafe. Is how I strafe left here. That should be fine. It's weird how fast the animations are. You'd think the opposite would be true since it's running on the Super Nintendo. I mean, it is, it is running on an emulator, but even so, yeah, I think it's that way on the original, too. What the hell? Uh, okay. Although, th despite the fact that they have faster animations, I think they move around at the same speed as the original. So, it's just an aesthetic appearance. Haha. -ha. Take that, you prick. You know what, even on the Super Nintendo, Doom is fun. And I actually have a fondness for the Super Nintendo version, not because I grew up on it or anything, but just because of how impressive it is. You gotta admit, it's pretty damn impressive. They, they really put in a lot of effort into this. It, it obviously even has the lighting effect, lighting on it. So it's not exactly Wolfenstein 3D with Doom skin. It's got the height maps, it's got the, the brightness maps, it's got pretty much everything except the ceiling and floor textures. So it's still pretty much Doom, but it's still pretty fun. It's funny because people have compared Doom 2016 on the Switch to Doom for the Super Nintendo. And I think Doom 2016 on the Switch is much better than Doom for the Super Nintendo because, I mean, for one thing, it's much more playable and it has much more bearable... The graphical downgrade is much more bearable. Not to say this can't be reasoned with, but... This obviously looks drastically worse. Whereas the Switch version of Doom actually looks pretty close to the other versions. You know, just blurrier. And let's face it, all consoles of the original Doom had a pretty low resolution compared to the PC version, unless you're talking about the friggin' Jaguar version. I think the, la the next console to have actual PC-like resolution, or even maybe above the PC version, was the PS1 version. So yeah. The Super Nintendo version, the 32X version, the, 30 the 30O version was just a mess because Apparently one person was given like a few weeks to do it, so she was basically lied and said, oh, it's basically done. You know, except not really. You have to port it from the Jaguar and you only got a few weeks to do it by yourself. So yeah, no wonder it turned out a mess. I don't blame the developer, I blame whoever. I blame the company that hired her to do it. Because clearly that company was being completely lazy. And apparently the reason why the Saturn version is choppy is because John Carmack 
he didn't like the fact that when the Saturn's GPU is used to render out environments, it has a fine texturing, you know, where it warps around. You may have noticed it in PS1 and Saturn games. The N64 was sort of ahead of its time because it actually didn't have that. It had 3D perspective. It had 3D correct textures so they didn't bounce around all over the place. It's especially prevalent in certain games. But yeah, Carmack wouldn't let them use the GPU, so they had to use the CPU. And even though it was dual core, it was still extremely weak. It made the game run like hell. Apparently they had a, P a version, a port of the PC version on Saturn that ran 60 frames per second without any problems, but it had the A-fine texturing problem, so Carmack said like, oh, scrap it. I'd rather have lag than make the textures look a little warpy. And granted, he did admit he did admit in retrospect that maybe it wasn't such a hot idea, but I mean, come on. You had to have known at the time that just having it be choppy like that is stupid. That's garbage. Why would you prefer that even in retrospect? I'd rather have it run well than just have the textures look perfect. I mean, let's face it. The fact that it has a terrible frame rate is going to be far more noticeable to people than just having the textures look a little weird. And let's be honest, it's it's still gra a graphically inferior version of the PS1 version because it's basically just the PS1 version minus the cool colored lighting. So, no matter what, it's a graphical downgrade anyway, so why not just sacrifice the texture quality to make it run well? Oh, well. Th this is years ago. This, this is, like, decades ago stuff, so maybe I should not harp on it. But yeah, if you look on at Duke 3D on the Sega, Sega Saturn, it may be extremely stripped down compared to the PS1 and Duke 64 versions in terms of functionality, but it was at least as complex as Doom, and it ran really well in the system. Hell, they, they got Quake to run well in the system just by using the Slave Driver engine. I imagine if they'd used the Slave Driver engine to port over Doom, they wouldn't have had a single problem because they had the functionalities commonly seen in Doom in the Saturn version of Duke 3D. They just didn't have the extra bells and whistles that the build engine had. So if they had ported Doom onto that, onto the build, onto the Slave Driver engine, what did I call it? Build Driver? Probably because it's, probably because Duke 3D is in use of the build engine for the PC version. So I thought of that. It's the Slave Driver engine. And, yeah. If they had put Doom on that, I'm pretty sure it would have ran perfectly. I mean, aside from some quirks, Doom 2 on the Game Boy Advance is more or less faithful to the original. The funny thing is it even has Doom-specific glitches, like apparently slime trails, which is kind of funny. I guess they were trying to emulate the way Doom is rendered as much as possible within that engine. I mean, that's just a guess. It's kind of weird that an engine based specifically for the GBA would have Doom-specific issues. Unless they based Southpaw off of id Tick 1, but that would just be weird. But anyway, enough rambling. Although I'm not sure which is more impressive on the GBA, Doom 2 or Duke Nukem Advance. Because Duke Nukem Advance has its own level, so obviously it doesn't have to worry about complexity like Doom 2 Game Boy Advance had to. But at the same time, the bodies didn't disappear. I mean, heck, even in this version, the bodies don't disappear, if you notice. Also, one misconception people make is that Nintendo was still censor happy. Ever since Mortal Kombat on the Super Nintendo bombed, they quit censoring violence. As you can see, there's red blood here, just to clear up a misconception. Wolfenstein 3D was, was censored for violence because it released before Mortal Kombat. Anything that released after Mortal Kombat for the Super Nintendo, Nintendo didn't have them censor it for violence. The only reason Wolfen, well, the only reason Doom for the Game Boy Advance had compromised violence is because they deliberately chose to because the GBA was seen as it's, it was seen as having a lower demographic, essentially. So they wanted to target it for you know younger teens. They didn't want it to get an M rating. They figured having it get an M rating on the GBA would be suicide. So they chose to censor it so the ESPR would give it a T rating. So. I mean, if you want to blame anyone, I guess you could blame it on the ESBR. Yeah, the ESBR for the rating system because they were forced to get rid of the red blood. Which, if you think about it, doesn't make any sense because Duke Nukem Advance also has... It also has red blood, and it managed to get a T rating, but then again, maybe that's because it's less gory. 
But then again, Doom, get, Doom for GBA also removed the giblets, so it's also less gory than the PC version. Although clearly, as you can see, the Super Nintendo version did not have this problem. It had gore. You can see the giblets just decorating the hall, decorating the, the floor there. So yeah, like I said, Duke 64 was censored for things like nudity, for religion, and for, if I remember, no, religion, drugs, and nudity, and cursing. Other than that, it was pretty much, it wasn't censored for violence at all. In fact, as I may have pointed out, it's actually more vile than the PC version because you can use any weapon to giblet the corpses, just like on Quake 2. So, in a way, it's more violent. And in fact, the funny thing is, as I mentioned in Duke 64, I, I said I would mention it when we got there, but I think I'm just going to mention it now. Those women that are hanging, that have their, you know, their side boobs showing, they basically censor that by just chopping them. They basically chop out the center. I don't mean as in a sensor th type of thing. It literally looks like they took a cleaver to it. So you've got their spinal cords hanging out. And there's just a big gap where that was because it looks like they got chopped up. Which I find kind of silly. Because, oh, yeah, nudity is, is too much. We can't show side boob, but, you know, let's chop them in half and let their spinal cord hang out. Because that's much better for kids. Right? You know, other than kids knowing that boobs exist. Let's just chop them in half. I think Eurocom did that on purpose. Because I think Eurocom was trying to censor it as little as possible, and I guess they were poking fun at Nintendo. Because with Duke Nukem, Duke Nukem Zero Hour, they do poke fun and say, Dry Town by order of Sheriff Ted Nendo. So I'm thinking maybe that when they were doing that, it was basically a middle finger to Nintendo saying, Oh, you don't want boot, you want the side boots, huh? Fine. We'll just chop her in half and make it extra gory. You like that? I bet you I bet you would prefer that, wouldn't you? But you prefer for these nice innocent women to be chopped up. Rather than just showing part of their body. But it is kind of funny. Ooh, what do we have here? And as you can see, it's pretty much the same as the PC version in terms of levels. Aside from the animations being faster and obviously floor and wall text, floor and ceiling textures, I'm sorry, why did I say wall textures? Oh yeah, and also for some reason, the HUD, the HUD face actually gets bloodier than it does in the PC version. Because usually at 60, he's still just nose bleeding, but there, and also the blood is also made more pronounced. It's probably because the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, don't know why I keep mincing my words. The Super Nintendo has a lower col color depth than the PC version, so it probably compensated by making the red more pronounced. Although it is, it does more or less look the same otherwise. It does look surprisingly faithful to the Nintendo, I mean the PC version, all things considered. In, in terms of colors, it looks really faithful. It's mostly just lower res and the, the, flats, the flat textures are missing. But other than that, it looks pretty faithful. Surprisingly faithful. I mean, if it was on the Genesis, if the Genesis could even do such a thing, let's say there was a chip inserted into the cartridge that allowed Doom to run on the Genesis in this kind of fashion, it would probably look way worse because the Genesis can't display as many colors on screen at once. I do know it had to use dithering a lot more than the Super Nintendo ver than the Super Nintendo did, simply because the Super Nintendo has more color depth. I think it has a better GPU, and I think it has more RAM. Pretty much the only thing that the Genesis had the edge in is that its central processor or CPU, it was actually much faster. So that's why they, that's why in their ads they're like, hey, blast processing, man. Super Nintendo's too slow, man. Yeah, it was basically because of their CPU. It, it, they had the advantage there. But in terms of just about everything else, the Super Nintendo was out in front. But, you know, that's that's advertising. Of course, they're going to cherry-pick the one thing they're at an advantage, and they're not going to announce, Hey, everybody, get the Genesis! It has worse color depth. It has a worse GPU. It has less RAM. Come on, guys. Obviously, they're not going to do that. That would just be stupid. So they take the one thing they have an advantage in, which was the CPU, and they hyped it up to hell and back. You've got to have blast processing, man. Although, considering there was a Sonic... 
bootleg game on the Super Nintendo, I have to question how much of that blast processing was even necessary for Sonic. I'm not saying it didn't make games run faster, I'm pretty sure it did, and that Duke 3D kind of unofficial version for the Sega Genesis was pretty impressive. I think it actually had a higher resolution because it kind of dithered everything. Which, it looks weird, but it, it does look crisper than, than this. I will give it that. Even though it actually plays much worse. Because it pretty much is just the Wolfenstein 3D engine. Maybe they should have put a chip in there or something like they did, like um, it did with the Super Nintendo version of Doom. Maybe whoever did that Duke 3D unique version, I, 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 I want to call it a port, but I can't because it's it's not even remotely the same. It's got its own levels and everything just acts completely different. So it's version of Duke 3D. They probably should have had a chip in the cartridge. That probably would have allowed them to push it more. You know, actually have 3D environments. Not just have Wolfenstein levels. Which are kind of crappy to control anyway because it feels like it's slippery whenever you try to play it. Maybe I'll play that next. Just for the hell of it, just to show you guys. Any of you guys who haven't already seen someone review it, I'm pretty sure there are, there are at least a dozen people on YouTube who've already reviewed it, if not played it outright. But heck, that's something I, uh, I'll check out if anyone wants me to. But anyway, enough of that. Yeah, like I, like I said, if they had the system, if they had a chip in the cartridge, they might have been able to do something like this, where it may not have floor and wall textures, but at least it would actually be able to have 3D. 3D environments to this extent. At least it would play. It would play more like the PC. Duke Nukem. Oh crap. Oh you bastard. Well that's that's very unfortunate. At least I got to keep my weapons but still. Hang tight real quick. Okay I'm back. This time I actually cleared out that courtroom before I went up here. It's much easier when you actually have some cover. When you go up there, you're basically making yourself more vulnerable, so there's no tactical advantage. Well, I guess you could shoot from above, but there's not that many enemies that can see you from that vantage point immediately, so... If anything, it might actually hurt you more than it helps you. So yeah, I would just go the normal way if you're finding going up there a little difficult. Just saying. You go, especially if you jump down, you're basically just g getting yourself into the fryer. Let's see if I can, if I can at least get, there we go. Okay, good. I was hoping I didn't fall into the slime. That is one thing I will admit, that the Jaguar version made better when it got rid of that. It, when it made the slime pit smaller, it made it closer to the floor. You know what I mean, it made the pits basically negligible, it just made them a step. So, it did improve things in that regard, in my opinion. I think those, where you get, those traps where you get stuck forever, it's just BS. Could have at least added teleporters to that or something. I would have preferred that, really. But I, I guess at the time, you know, at the time they, they figured, you know, and why not screw with the player? I guess it, it's not as big of a deal in the PC version because you can save anytime you want, so, you know, as long as you're saving dutifully as much as you feel the need to, you probably won't lose that much progress if you fell into the slime pit. Unless you just ha unless you just don't like saving. Unless you're just you're just completely allergic to saving, then you might have some trouble, but other than that, I think you'll be just fine. I wonder what E1M9 looks like without the cage. I wonder if it's if it's still impassable for the imps. I wonder if they're just being held there by some kind of invisible force. Or if they're allowed to come out, because if they're allowed to come out, that kind of changes things drastically. Also, the shotgun doesn't really have spread in this version. It's pretty much just a rifle. Unfortunately, that works with you and against you. Take that. There you go. You like that? I bet you don't. I bet you don't like that at all. I bet that really hurts you. That really messes up your day, doesn't it? Well, now we're even, aren't we, you prick? Kinda weird how there are no enemies up here, but oh well. I guess that dims the brakes. 
It's not like I chose an easier difficulty on myself. This is ultra violence. I guess they tested it and they figured that having that many enemies would just bog down the engine too much. Or, you know, it would bog down the hardware too much, I mean. I mean, this is the Super Nintendo we're talking about. It's just a humble little 16-bit system just trying to, trying its damnedest to pump out a pseudo 3D game, which it was never meant to do. When the Super Nintendo and the Genesis were made, I don't think 3D was really mainstream. I mean, obviously it was in arcade machines, but it wasn't really a thing for home experiences. It wasn't really main, it wasn't a mainstream experience in that regard. Also, that's kind of interesting that they chose to give it the red key factor. I guess they wanted to make it look like an invisible force field or something, you know, to sort of justify it. I find it interesting how... Wow, okay, that is weird. I find it interesting how they couldn't do transparency in terms of cages, but they were able to do transparency in terms of the shotgun itself. I think that's because the shotgun itself isn't a 3D element. Wow. So there's actually an aspect of the Super Nintendo version that is arguably more technologically impressive than the PC version. Although if you had brightened the pixels instead of darkened them, you would have had a really cool shimmering water effect, so, you know, wasted there. Oh well. But in terms of the final product, this actually looks more impressive than the PC version because there's actual transparency. You didn't have to fake it. You know, by making it a dotted line, it actually looks faded. Which is kind of fitting. Ah, right. I guess they're still encaged to, to an extent. They're basically encaged just by that gentle hump. And I guess it is the most powerful thing in the world. A gentle step. Even though the actual stairs go up more than that. And they have no problems going up that, but you know. Suspension of disbelief because we couldn't be arsed to fix it. <laughs> nah, it's alright. Maybe they should have raised it up a little bit more though. Make it look more believable, to say the least. Just saying. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if we can go through that. Or if they're trying to make the gameplay the same even if it doesn't make any sense. See, look at that. The shotgunners are actually even more deadly in this version than the PC version. Okay, I guess for some reason they decided we can't go through there. They're determined to make the gameplay the same even if it doesn't make any friggin' sense. Oh well. I guess it's no big deal, right? We can still play like this. Oh look, it's that elevator. Isn't that nice that everything's the same? Well, as much as they can. As much as they can be the same, anyway. Ah, look at that! It even has that! Now that is dedication. They did not have to do this. This is an optional area that many players probably would just skip right past. So the fact that they even did it at all, that's pretty admirable. Although maybe they were just too lazy to figure out a way to replace it. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, they could have gotten rid of it completely if they wanted to. But they managed to actually get it in there, so I guess, in that sense, like I said before, the P this, the SNES version is the closest to the PC in terms of actual complexity. That's probably because they couldn't just port it over from the Jaguar. They had to give it its own engine with its own kind of map structure. At least that would be my guess. My guess is they couldn't just pop in a WAD file and call it a day. They probably had to use its own file structure. If I had to guess. That. Let's see. Ooh. Okay, it is animated. At least it's got that much. But then again, why am I acting so surprised? What the? You do have explosive barrels. You do not use explosive barrels. How come you almost never use them then? Seriously, there's there's very little explosive barrels around here. I noticed in many cases where they they're usually at, they, they they're just gone. It's weird. Hello. That's weird. Not that they aren't a threat, because like I said, they their shotguns are more like rifles now, but that's weird that they decided to omit that many enemies. Ah, oh, look at that. Look how many corpses are on screen too. Maybe I shouldn't be this impressed. Because Doom is Doom was meant to be a fast game. It was meant to be to run fast even on weaker computers, but this is the Super Nintendo we're talking about here. The GBA didn't even match up to PCs at the time that Doom was released and that were recommended for Doom. And 
This is weaker than that, obviously, because the Game Boy Advance version managed to have floors and ceiling textures. And it also managed to have... Well, yeah, yeah okay. Never mind. I was about to say, it's the one that actually has disappearing, te disappearing corpses, but it does manage to have floor and ceiling textures, and the Doom 2 version is almost like, is almost identical to the PC version, except superficial changes, and one of the levels is split in half, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. Oh crap. Oh crap! I'm getting stuck. Yeah, you know what? The problem is, they may have had the strafe buttons on the L and R to make it easier to strafe, but they, for some reason, they fixed it so that you can't turn. You can't turn or at the same time as you strafe, so certain strafing is pretty much, it can't be done. Watch what happens if I try to strafe and turn at the same time. See, look, it just doesn't happen. Watch what happens if I turn and then start strafing and then I'm gonna have the turning held down and then just start strafing. Yeah, see, I stopped turning the second I strafe. So that's, that's an unfortunate factor. You can't strafe and turn at the same time, so it makes some encounters harder than they need to be. And it makes movement harder than it needs to be, especially when you're used to the PC version. Let's see. Uh oh. Okay, why is the chain gun considered higher above the totem pole than the freaking rocket launcher, huh? That's just weird. Oh well. No harm, no foul, I guess. Except I'm about to die. So. Whatever happens, happens. If I die, I guess it will just be the end of it, won't it? Hello! Prepare to die. Oh, crap. Okay, I died from one from behind. I guess that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Make sure to spread this video around like visible pixels. And I will see you next time. Now go out there and capitalize on life. Peace out, have a good one, and have a nice and pleasant day. If you enjoyed the content and want to stay up to date, I upload 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. You can also subscribe and hit the bell icon, or just check out the end screens right here.